Are you ready for this? 20-8 is on page 897. G printing court, <coughs> commonly referred to as we, use a job order cost system. The following information summarizes the operations related to the first quarter's production. There are six items there that command our attention. If you skip down with me to the word instructions and read on, prepare entries to record the operations summarized above. Let us consider item one. Materials purchased on account and factory wages incurred should be recorded in two entries in my opinion. Let us consider materials purchased on account. May I have a volunteer who would record this entry for me? Sam, you got that call on me, look in your face. You do. Um, materials purchased on account. Okay. Materials purchased on account. Sam. Debit to raw materials inventory. Good. And credit to account payable. Debit raw materials and credit accounts payable for $192,000. Way to go, Sam. One. B. Factory wages incurred. Brandon, can you help me? Uh, factory wages incurred would be journalized how? Factory labor. Debit or credit? Debit. Is a, is a correct answer. And credit? Uh, factory wages payable. Is correct. How come you had that, I don't have a clue what I'm talking what? about, look on your face, <laughs> yet you gave me two such good right answers? Um, you trying to fake me out or something? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Debit factory labor, credit wages payable for 87.3. If you're with me right this minute, good. If you're not, this would be a good time to ask. Yes? Why do we know that it's wages payable to the cash? Because it said incurred. What a good question. What a really, really good question. If it had said factory wages paid, we would have credited cash. Thank you for asking that for the benefit of the whole class. That was good. It's good to ask questions in class. Mm -hmm. Two, materials requisitioned and factory labor used by job. Well, in the same way that item one, we broke into two parts, I think there's two things going on here. <laughs> I think we should concentrate on the materials first and then the labor. Let's do that. Materials requisitioned would be journalized how I need a volunteer. correct answer. There is more information here than that. We might discover that if I ask you a follow-up question, for how much, Matt? Um, what, what is the amount of the entry you had in mind? The debit for manufacturing Uh-huh. Um, 158. That is incorrect. So now we're on the, on the way to be there, okay? Um, it seems to me that the 158,000 represents the total of all the materials that left the material store. Could we agree on that class? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the portion that you referred to is some number less than that. Could you look at that list again and see a more appropriate number to debit manufacturing overhead with? That is in the labor column and has nothing to do with materials. You should pretend it's not there. We just took a step backwards. Um, 4,470 4, is correct. 
I heard correctly from you debit manufacturing overhead. I heard incorrectly from you, never mind, you were correct on that one too, to credit raw materials. When you had in mind, I have a feeling that you thought raw materials should be credited for 4470, and I've got a feeling that raw materials should be credited for 158,000. Now, Matt, it seems to me that there's some admonishment in accounting, something like um, uh, 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 debits and credits have to equal. <laughs> Did I hear that first time? No, I, I lost it all. Debit what? Working process. Debit working process, how much? <laughs> and you want me to determine that for you? And the rest of you better have it too. One, two, three, five, thirty. I didn't say give it to me. I said you didn't have it. <laughs> you learn more when you participate. Are you still waiting on the answer? I am. He was right. Who cares? Okay. He's not in charge here. 153, 530. How'd you get it? I can think of two ways to get that number. You apparently subtracted 4470 from 158. Yes, sir. That's a pretty efficient way to get there. Debit work in process, $153,530 is correct math. I need auditor. That's good. Good. Could somebody please tell me the other way to get this? Aaron? You could add up jobs A20 through A23. Did you? No, I didn't. But I think you. I can't instill in you enough the importance of you checking your own work to have that curiosity, to want to. Know that your word is correct before you go to the next thing. Aaron says, if we added 35 to 40, 42 920, 36 100, and 39 to 70, it's real easy for you to not want to do that right this minute because you've already got the answer. And if that list was 120 items long, I might not do it either. But I don't see anything wrong with. In fact. Perhaps we should have done that first. Added those things up. And then gotten the plug number to see if it worked. Why, Aaron? Is this true? Because that's what's being used to work in the process as opposed to. What's the difference, Matt and Aaron? <coughs> Whichever one of you wants to handle this first. What's the difference between the 4,470 and all those others, Matt? Let me do it differently. Let me do it differently. If this hadn't unfolded the way it did, Matt started telling me numbers right off, and I thought I could use the numbers to get him to the right answer, and I think I succeeded at that. But if Matt had been content to give me write account names first if we didn't know numbers. The follow-up question I would have asked of Matt was could we play a couple of word games to tell me how much before we get the numbers? Let's try it, Matt. Debit work in process, how much? A word, a description. Um, the direct is correct, is the word I'm looking for. Thank you for the direct materials. And debit, manufacturing overhead, how much, Matt? The indirect. Is correct. And credit, raw materials, how much? The, the, the debits and credits have to equal. The total of those two numbers. There's no other way to describe that that I can think of. So, I, I want to come back to this. This is the point I'm making, but while we're on the word game thing, let's play it for the other word game, debit work in process with uh, 
You remember that one, Eric? Ooh, right in the middle of a bite. <laughs> Somebody gonna play this? <laughs> Somebody gonna play this word game with me? <laughs> Dustin? Actual. Actual. Debit manufactured overhead with? Actual. Therefore, credit raw materials for? Actual. Seems silly, but it might pay off in understanding if we stick with it. You trust me? Good. Appreciate it. Back to you, ma'am. Do you remember the answers you gave me just a second ago that I bragged on? Who yeah. gave you the good feeling? Oh, you got those right? Yes. Direct, indirect, and... Okay, let's translate the, the words, direct, indirect, and total, to the numbers that you got a minute ago. So, so let's pretend we don't have the numbers, and I'm looking for one of those numbers, direct, indirect, or total, which one's the most obvious? All the materials left the material storeroom. That's how you got the 158,000. The authors summed the column for us. Thank you very much. We didn't have to do a thing, except know where to put it. All the materials left the material storeroom. They went two places. Some of, I want Matt to say this to me. Some of them. Directly into the job. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. The others helped. The others are not traceable to a specific job. All of these were. And they're differentiated on that list by saying job, 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 general factory use. Who's with Matt and me right this minute, please? Good. So I'm thinking we might benefit right this minute from having us a subsidiary ledger. This is the cost ledger. And in the cost ledger, there are files, subsidiary ledgers ac accounts. Each individual one of these is called a job cost sheet. And it's where we accumulate the information. Remember the differentiating thing between this chapter and next <coughs> is that the costs are traceable to the particular jobs on which we work. The name of this first job was 20, yes? Did we see any beginning inventory mentioned in this problem? I don't remember reading anything about beginning inventory. If there were beginning inventory, some of these jobs would have cost on them already. This is the subsidiary ledger, much like accounts receivable has customers' accounts in it. And much like there is in the general ledger a control account for accounts receivable that agrees with all that, in manufacturing there is a control account called work in process that agrees with the cost ledger. These are the details. This is the general information that keeps the general ledger in balance. For job 20, we just incurred materials costs Aaron, you're sitting close to me. Would you read me that figure? Uh, 35,240. 35,240, is that what you said? Yes, sir. And for job 21? 32,900. And for job 22? 36,100. And for job 23? 39,200. Do I have the facts right, class? Yes. So the specific information goes to individual jobs. The sum of all these, the 158,000, mm, excuse me, 153,530, the debit to work in process, the direct materials cost incurred, were 153,530. Yes or no? If you've got a question, please ask me. <coughs> Two. B, and factory labor used. Matt's done a really, really good pioneering job for you to have good command of your resources right this minute. This entry ought to be a whole lot easier for you now that we've done what we've done. May I have a volunteer? Hey. Brandy? Okay, so you would get it. Manufacturing overhead for seven three zero zero. And 
and you would debit working progress for eight, um, 80000 and you would credit factory labor for eighty seven. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear any of those numbers. I'm going to pretend I heard from you debit working process, debit manufacturing overhead, credit factory labor. Is that what you said? Yes, Let's play word game. Okay. Debit working process, how much? A word. Debit working process for direct cost. Is correct. In this case, it's direct labor. Okay. <laughs> direct is good enough for me. Debit manufacturing overhead for? Indirect and credit factory labor for the total. Yes, Which of these is the easiest to get right this minute? Um, the I think that's the hardest one. Oh. <laughs> Just an opinion. Which is the easiest one? The total they gave you. Yeah. So where does it belong? It goes with factory labor. Factory labor was credited with 87.3. Would somebody look with me at the factory labor debit right that minute? I'm sorry, long, long ago. Brandy, have you posted this credit to factory labor mentally? Credit to factory labor mentally? Uh-huh. Well, go ahead and do that now. A minute ago, we debited factory labor. I, my, my cover sheet's too big. Okay. For 87.3. You just credited it for 87.3. What's the balance of factory labor right this minute? Yeah. Thank you. Y'all with Brandy and me? Mm -hmm. It's an accumulation distribution kind of an account. It ought to zero out. There should be nothing left in that account. Brandy says debit work in process for direct labor, debit manufacturing overhead for indirect labor. Now, which is the easiest number to get? Uh, because there's only one up. It's given. How much? Uh, 7,300 was incurred to employees that helped in the factory in a general capacity, their efforts were not traceable to any one particular job on which they worked. They helped. I thought debit credits had equal. <coughs> they don't? When? When you add the difference in the debit column or progress. So you're suggesting we plug it? Um, you could, or you could add them all. Have you? You added them all up? Promise cross your heart? How, what'd you get? Confess to me that you added them all. Come on, somebody do it. I got two people with you. That's a crime check. The sum of all those numbers is $80,000, Brandy says. Do debits and credits equal? Did you try it? Sure enough. I mean, it's pretty easy to do in your head, yes. If you've got a question about this, you could ask me. And we ought to post, don't you think, Aaron? So some of those labor costs were incurred on job 20. How many? 18,000. And job 21? 22,000. And job 22? 15,000. 50? 15,000. And job 23? 25. And Brandy says we ought to debit work in process with 80000 the direct labor costs that should be incurred, it should be recorded in this account, were $80,000. How are we doing so far? <laughs> we're having a little aha moment up here. Would it be wrong to do all that as one compound entry? Absolutely not. Would it be wrong for me to try to find the hardest way possible when I can teach these things? Is it okay if I make it in two entries? Yes. I think the author intended for them to be in two entries the way it was worded. But I think that'd be mush for the first time we've ever been through this. Three, manufacturing overhead costs incurred on account. I need a volunteer. Too many people in this room know how to do this for you to be sitting on your hands and not participating right this minute. Help me out. Did 
did you say something to me? I saw your lips move. I'll, I'll answer the question. I just didn't hear what the question was. Uh, it's three. Manufacturing overhead costs incurred on account. Please, with Debit manufacturing overhead. Credit accounts payable. Debit manufacturing overhead. Credit accounts payable is correct. How would you describe what happened there with? From Monday's lecture, a little diagram, flow of cost through the accounts, vocabulary, new words. What's going on right here? We're doing business. We're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as generic as you can think of, right? It's pretty safe. Yeah. Um, uh, our Josh? I have a question. Ooh, I'm, 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 it's appropriate. I want to do it in a second. Tucker? Uh, isn't this the amount that we're like applying? As I no. Oh, okay. I'm so glad you said it here. No, because we're debiting manufacturing overhead. This is not applying. That's one of the points I'm trying to make. You helped me make it. The, okay, let, let's refresh your memory. Let, let me take you down this path again. Three stages of production, three inventory accounts that parallel them, three elements of cost, three subparts of manufacturing overhead. Name them. Don't look. <laughs> Did y'all hear what she said? She said other. other. Uh, purchase raw material. No, you started at the beginning. I skipped all. I skipped all that and got all the way over to the end. Name me the three subparts of manufacturing overhead in the order that we learned them. Indirect materials. Indirect labor. And other. Is anybody with me right this minute? Yes. I, I think it was appropriate that the authors gave us something that we could experience in the journal entries to record some other stuff. This may be the utilities in the factory. This could be all sorts of things. But it was one of those miscellaneous costs in the factory that we've incurred and didn't pay for. Do those costs get posted to the job cost sheets right this minute? No. Yeah. They don't. We don't know what portion of those belongs on each job. Let's see if we can figure that out. Four, depreciation on machinery and equipment, 14550 I need a volunteer and I need to pass. Same. I would um, debit the manufacturing overhead for 14550 and then credit accumulated depreciation for 14000 Debit, depreciation, expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. Is that what you said the first time? No, I said it. But when I said it, you said <laughs> as if you like my answer better than yours. Well, it's kind of like that. Uh, this. But are we playing horseshoes? <laughs> what does kind of like that have to do with anything? Well, how I did it. One of us is right and one of us is wrong. Mm -hmm. Who's right? I would say I was. You are. What's the deal here? Is well, this debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation? Uh, say no. No. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard to say. Why, Sam, is it debit manufacturing overhead credit accumulated depreciation? <coughs> say what? I didn't say anything. Yet. Um, <laughs> why? It, well, because it's on manufacturing overhead. It's general, somewhere it doesn't have to do directly with the job. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were giving me one of wits, one size fits all kind of in <laughs> entries, but I found a little bit of merit in your answer. Good. Why is it not depreciation expense? Why is it manufacturing overhead? I need some help. Somebody say it. What? Part of the cost, it's one of the elements of cost. Is it indirect materials, indirect labor, or other? This is other. Here's another one. So we debited manufacturing overhead on the previous slide for some that we incurred on account. Here's some other manufacturing costs. Now we're not keeping up with everything about manufacturing overhead, but we've had a nice flavor for it. We debited it for indirect materials, we debited it for indirect labor, and now we've debited it twice for some other kinds of things. 
we accumulate these miscellaneous factory costs in manufacturing overhead. It's a shame. So you talked about yesterday that <clears throat> we're not doing away with expenses. Can you explain that? Yeah. The president's salary, the depreciation on the desk in his office, the automobile that we provide him or her are not directly associated with production. The sales staff might get a commission. The commission we pay them is not part of production. All those things that happen after we produce the product are expenses. Advertising is an expense. But if it has to do with the factory, and that's our emphasis because this is all new, that stuff we've done before and that's why it's not mentioned so much, it's assumed to be the same thing. So the depreciation on the factory would be included in manufacturing overhead, but the depreciation on the office building that somewhere else would not? Precisely, okay. which is the example in the handout where I did that very thing. Two debits to depreciation expense for office and store, same way we've always done it, but one debit to manufacturing overhead for what was in the factory. Does anybody else have a question? Five. Randy, was your hand about to go up? No, sir. Five. Manufacturing overhead rate is 80% of direct labor costs. Let me address it. Um, I, I'd rather finish this exercise and talk about manufacturing overhead in detail at the end of class if I have the time than to interrupt this, give you the long version of manufacturing overhead that you deserve to hear, and not finish this exercise. Do you understand the choice I just made? Yeah. Um, in Monday's lecture, may I hold this again? Yeah. I, I have been known to finish this lecture on many occasions. It is a push, but there were two topics left that I didn't get to. And the one about manufacturing overhead, class notes are still here, blank. I am in the process of making an attempt to make this an out-of-class lesson. I did it yesterday in my office all by myself where I was the cameraman and the produc production supervisor and the lighting director and everybody. And it turned out a little more hokey than I could deal with. Okay? I posted it anyway. Um, it's there. It's not as effective as I wanted it to be and I'm going to try to tweak it a little bit. So it might get better before the week's over. I don't know. Um, I, I'd like to have this conversation with you. Maybe at the end of today. I don't know if I'll get there or not. We need to know how they got that 80%. I haven't covered that yet. So I'm kind of skipping a whole lot. I'm skipping to the, if you're given the rate, how do you use the rate step? Y'all with me here? What are we going to do with it? And that's what we're going to try to demonstrate here. The manufacturing overhead rate is 80% of direct labor cost. So I need a little help. This entry could also be described as make me the entry to apply overhead to production. May I have a volunteer? Tucker? Oh, you're asking for the entries? Okay. Yeah. Um, wait, say it one more time. What was it? Apply overhead to production. So um, you're going to uh, debit work in process? Is correct. And you're going to credit manufacturing overhead. Debit work in process. Credit manufacturing overhead is correct, Tucker. Way to go. Tucker, let's play a word game. Okay. Debit work in process. Credit manufacturing overhead. How much? A word. Applied. This is the applied amount. Thank you for knowing that. Now, do you want to be responsible for helping me find this amount? Or would you like to use a lifeline? I'll use this guy right here. <laughs> Friend, are y'all friends? Are y'all friends? Not, Not anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for a volunteer. Help me find the amount of this entry, please. Somebody. With? 80% uh, of 87,300. Where'd you get 87,300? Uh, under factory labor. Under factory labor, that sum 87,300? Yes, with? With. Let's play a little word game. Debit work in process, how much? 80,000. No. That's not a word. I guess it is. You can write it out like you do on a check, but I was uh, thinking that was a number. Work in process. Debit it for a work. Applied? 
Nope. Brandy. Direct. This is direct labor. What's this one, Brandy? Indirect. What's this one, Brandy? Total. This 80% is supposed to be which uh, width? 80% of, what's it say in the book? The direct. The direct labor. You don't suppose there's a little teeny weeny connection between us identifying those earlier for such a time as this, do you? 80% of $80,000 with? $64,000 with thinks. I need an auditor on 64000 okay. How y'all doing? The applied amount, the estimated amount, is 80% of direct labor. Now, that's the way you do it in real life. It's an estimate based on something else. You've got to go and find the something else in order to be able to come up with this estimate. I'm just dying to tell you that part that I'm trying to skip. I'm going to hold another frame. <laughs> Read six with me. Jobs completed during the quarter, 20, 21, and 23. 20, 21, and 23. I'm just going to put a little dot here to remind myself that it's these three that I need to know the total cost of. Not 22. Ooh, I was just seeing if you were paying attention. Uh, and obviously you were, <laughs> thank goodness. These three whip? Yes. Good. Are, he, are these all the costs I incurred on this job? Say yes or no, everybody? Mm -hmm. mm, let's do a show of hands. Are these all the costs I incurred on this job? Yes? No? Didn't sound that way the first time. So let's do it one more time verbally. Are these all the costs I incurred on this job? No. What does it take to produce a product I need one hand up? The elements of cost are? <laughs> Brandy? Um, what does it take to produce a product? The elements of cost. That's the same question. Okay, so you've got direct labor. Yes. Um, direct material labor. Yes. And the manufacturing overhead other. No, not other, just manufacturing overhead. Okay. The elements of cost are materials, labor, and overhead. You can say direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead if you want to. That's a lot of syllables. If you're trying to set a speed record for talking like I do sometimes, then you can just cut to the chase. It takes materials, labor, and overhead to produce a product. What's wrong with this account at the moment, class? No. There's no overhead in this. How can I get an overhead figure in this first job? If you want to talk to me about that, raise your hand, please. Tucker? Uh, you're going to use that rate of 80% on the labor, the direct labor that you And then what with it? Multiply the two together. We're going to take this labor figure in this job and take 80% of that. Brandon, could you help your friend out and give me 80% of $18,000 you got to calculate? Brandon, it's 20 till 2 and you're just now till 3 and you're just now getting the calculator out? What's this number? Say it. 14,400. The rest of you that are sitting on the sidelines better get in the game. 80% of this 22,000. Is some new volunteer? Nick? 80% of this number is somebody? Matt? Didn't hear you? 80% of this number is Brandon! Brandon! 20 grand. Okay, clear your calculators. Sum these for me. Raise your hand and tell me what you got. Today. <laughs> come on. You can't give two in a row, Brandon. I know you're trying to make up for lost time. I'll come back to you, okay? Yeah. Dustin. 67,640. 67, is that what I heard you say? I need auditors on this number, please. That's right. Mm -hmm. I need the sum of these costs. Sam. Yeah, right. Oh, you can't even see that part. Never mind. Auditors on this number, please. That's right. That's right. Let's skip to this one. How about the sum of these numbers? Who's got this job for me, Matt? Eighty-four thousand two seventy. Are you reading to me out of a used book? 
No, sir. Did you really add this up today, Matt? Way to go, Matt. Could somebody tell me account titles involved here? Do you even remember what journal entry we're doing? It says in the problem, jobs completed during the court. Uh, above that it says make the journal entries for each of these operations. I'm looking for an account to debit and an account to credit. I'm looking for a volunteer to do it. Oh, Alexis. Um, debit, finished goods, and credit, work in process. Debit, finished goods, credit, work in process for some number that is to be determined. Clear your calculators. Would you please, all of you, add this plus this plus this and tell me what you got? Raise your hand if you got me the number. Wit? Uh, let's see here. 234,430. I need an auditor. That's right. We're going to make an entry. Debiting finished goods and crediting work in process for the sum of the cost we accumulated on the job cost sheets. That's the way job order works. The jobs are distinguishable one from another. The costs are traceable. They can be associated with particular jobs on which we work. We keep up with the jobs separately. We debited finished goods and credited work in process. Let's post. Ooh, I forgot to post. That factory uh, manufacturing overhead figure, I had it on the screen a minute ago, I just forgot to post. Eloisa? 64,000? Yes, everybody? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I need to show you that journal entry? We made it. This journal entry is a credit work in process, 234,430. Did I write it correctly? Yes. Would you please add these debits for me and tell me the sum of these debits? If you have that number, raise your hand so I know I'm listening to you. You think you have it? Randy? Uh, 297530. Did I write what you said, Brandy? Mm -hmm. Is she right, class? Yes. Is this right, auditors? Mm -hmm. Yes? Let's find the balance of this account. 297530 in debits reduced by 234430 in credits is a balance in this account of anybody but Brandy. Yes, right over here. 63100. Auditors. Right. Uh, folks, I keep saying it, and I know it's corny, but the person in the cubicle right next to you is not doing the same work you're doing. You have to find a way to check your own work, to assure yourself that, of the quality of your work, to allow you to let go of something and move on to the next thing. What does that $63,400 consist of? Tucker, you want to talk to me? The stuff that's still working in process, or the stuff that you're still working Could on? Could you be just a little more specific and instead of saying the stuff? The... The cost of job. The cost of job what? Which job? Oh, uh, oh 22. The cost of job 22. Would you please, all of you, clear your calculator? And sum these costs for me, please. Three thirty-six one hundred fifteen thousand and twelve thousand is sixty-three thousand one hundred dollars of costs are in work and process. That's ending inventory. If you want to look at it that way, this is ending inventory in this stage of production, and that amount agrees with the control account and the general ledger just this once. It's just a fluke that it happened. It's just a, the biggest coincidence in the whole world. It's, you can't always count on that. <laughs> Did y'all buy that? No. It's the first time I've ever done that. Is that always going to happen? I mean, it's supposed to. Theoretically, it's supposed to always happen. Yes. The cost in the cost ledger on the remaining job cost sheets, the unfinished jobs, is equal to the balance of work and process. 
I wanted you to see the whole picture from start to finish. Was that helpful? Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Tucker, let's start.